Hi everyone and a warm welcome to another session of the AI Entrepreneurship Series from the Thrushek Academy. In this session um, I will show you what it needs related to people, processes and tools to properly design intelligence. But before we jump into the topic, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Jennifer Moosbrugger and I'm a designer and researcher at heart who for the last couple of years worked in the emerging and exciting field of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, I'm currently the head of UX-driven AI at Siemens Digital Industries and my research focus is on human, computer and machine interaction in the age of AI. If you look at the topic, there are two sides of the coin. One is related to AI for design, meaning how AI solutions can solve certain tasks, tasks and jobs in our human value creation and development. Talking about those little AI helpers such as ChatGPT, for example, or DALI, um, amongst others. And although this is a very important and interesting topic, with some very fantastic advancements during the last couple of months and years, today I want to focus on the aspect of design of AI systems, so the other side of the coin. So in my daily business and job routine, I work with a lot of different stakeholders, such as product management, sales, data scientists, machine learning engineers, IT departments, UX designers, and so on and so forth. And what I realized is they all do things slightly differently and focus on different topics during their development cycles, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes this also creates gaps and challenges, especially in AI-infused system development, where the main driver is technical feasibility and data centricity which is oftentimes lacking the domain expertise and user and problem understanding. And on the other hand, the business people might have the domain expertise, but lack understanding of AI capabilities and therefore have a hard time to define a problem statement that can be solved with AI technology or they cannot provide the data necessary to train machine learning algorithms. Similarly, UX designers sometimes lack the technical knowledge about AI and machine learning capabilities and might not be familiar with statistical concepts about data and the related domain know-how. And this shows that all experts have important skills and knowledge, but also gaps in their different approaches. So, how can we assure that those people can still collaborate with each other but taking their different approaches into account. Um, based on a huge amount of use cases in industrial as well as more commercial settings, interviews with stakeholders and experts, seven process modules that support this cross-disciplinary collaboration were established. The modules are based on the CRISP-DM process model, which Uli already introduced in another session. The double diamond process model from human centered design and ideas and concepts from lean startup and software development. You might be familiar with those um, approaches. The modules are set up, understand and define, input, meaning data input, modeling, the output, the deployment and the post processing module. They are enriched with concrete activities that each module comprises and also mapping their flow and dependencies. Each module creates an outcome which is the prerequisite for going forward. There is a proposed structure and order of the modules, but they can and should be used in a flexible, modular and iterative manner. Therefore, the given representation was chosen being more a cycle of activities rather than a linear flow. Let's get more concrete and have a look at the different modules. The setup module implies the initial briefing or starting point, the time schedule or the time horizon, the working mode, in best case something like Agile Scrum or any other iterative approach, and the team and their related roles. Setting up a diverse team with different skills and backgrounds is an important aspect in that regard. 
The skills and know-how part is supposed to make sure that everybody has a basic knowledge and understanding of AI capabilities right from the beginning. The next module, the Understand and Define module, is from a human-centered design perspective the most important one. It implies a problem definition and activities that are related to the users of the AI solution, such as need finding and user research. User involvement and engagement play a central role in this module. Ideation activities to solve the defined problems should be informed by the former activities. Expectation management related to the AI capabilities should inform the success and goal definition, which is a very crucial item. Research showed that agreeing on a definition of done and KPIs or a metric to validate the success of the AI system need to be agreed on early in the project and can serve as a sanity check throughout the iterative cycles. Even if the project team does not follow each activity of the process modules, the success and goal should be defined. And deriving needs, features and requirements is the final step of this module. The outcome in that case is process and business understanding from all team members involved. As a next step, a product vision or even several visions should be defined by the whole team. Those should imply the needs, the features and the requirements discovered, answer the problem statement and meet the success criteria. It should represent the best case scenario without any potential constraints like, for example, data access and availability or other issues. A visual representation can be very helpful in this step. The next module is related to the data input. It deals with the data understanding, collection and preparation. Is the data needed to train a machine learning algorithm accessible? Is enough historic data available? How much time would be needed to collect missing data and so on? The outcome of this module is an initial data set or even several data sets. A lot of time and effort in AI infused project is data work. The modeling module is related to choosing and coding the relevant AI and machine learning methods, train and test models, and think about architecture and infrastructure of the final solution. The outcome of a first iterative cycle is a prototype or proof of concept, POC, matching data and algorithms. It might be necessary to change the success definition or go back to the input module if the results do not match the wished outcome. The output module is related to the interface or interaction with the AI solution. This can be tested with users and the results can be validated. If testing and validation meet the success criteria and the dataset from the initial POC proof of concept can be scaled towards a productive solution, the goal of this module is reached. The outcome of this module is a system plus a potential scalability to other problems or other teams or other divisions. And this can be deployed. And then the deployment module is related to issues of security and privacy of the system itself, but also the data used. AI solutions need ongoing monitoring and maintenance and machine learning operations activities need to be established. The outcome of this module is a, a product or a service. However, compared to other software development projects, ongoing services and activities are necessary because something like this is never finished. Machine learning systems learn and hopefully improve over time. But this learning cycle needs to be designed and implemented as well. Therefore, the post-processing module is related to model retraining and a structured feedback loop. This might potentially lead to a completely new project or performing some of the modules over again. The given order of the process modules is only one possible example. The modularity of the given process allows and supports also other project patterns and can be arranged accordingly. For example, a project that would run through all the modules starting from setup 
until post-processing would look like the pattern above. It is very common to carry out an initial input validation session or even conduct a modeling module before setting up a project, which would create another project pattern as shown below. Or another case where the post-processing module makes new input and modeling development necessary or even setting up a completely new project. The module should support the collaboration of different experts from design, data science and business by combining activities that are relevant in each area, considering their different approaches and ways of working. They serve as a guiding principle, but allow for additional activities and an iterative approach and flexible use. They present an end-to-end -end development cycle that literally never stops. Developing AI systems needs a diverse set of skills and people. It's all about data, shit in, shit out, and therefore combining big statistical with thick qualitative data is a crucial part of solving AI challenges. Designing for AI means designing for a human-machine relationship that is dynamic and not static. Problem definition and understanding, a human focus, combined with te technological feasibility and business viability create the biggest impact. I hope you enjoyed the session and this high-level introduction to the seven process modules to support the development of AI-infused systems. For further information, you can visit design-intelligence.net or watch one or several of the deep dive sessions. Feel free to get in touch and keep in mind that technology in combination with a great usability and a real business need is most valuable.